This is Radio 76 on the go and we're live from Comic-Con Africa in Johannesburg. I'm with Nolan North and Troy Baker. Welcome to South Africa. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you. How's Comic-Con been for you so far? You go. <laughs> All right, well, uh, it's, it's, it's been fantastic. You know, we've, uh, uh, as I was saying earlier, we were invited last year and we had uh, committed to another uh, uh, project that week. Uh, so we told them, put us on the books. We, we want to we go. So uh, we did not know that when we got here, this is where we would be hanging yeah. out. Like we, there's ducks and fish and birds and water. And it's beautiful weather as well. Yeah. So this has been the only thing warmer than the weather are the people. Yeah. Wow. Um, we said that. Yep. that they, they, cheesy. Wow. Cheesy. 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 <laughs> yeah, we've had a blast. Um, it always surprises me when we go somewhere. We're 10,000 miles away from home. And it always surprises me that we can come this far from where we live and work and people know who we are or are fans of what we do. So it's been great. Okay, let's start with you now then. Okay. Both of you are voiceover actors for video games and animation movies. How did your journey start? Uh, well, uh, I was started out in theater, went to television, did some shows, um, and uh, somewhere along there, uh, you know, gaming in specifically was a place that could uh, um, allow me to, to, you know, actually break into the whole uh, gaming industry. And um, thank you. The we're having, we're are having coffee too. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Let's put that down there. Uh, we, um, I basically just started getting into voiceover. A, a good friend of mine said, you know, you're always doing these, these voices. You're always uh, full of around. Always doing around. these voices. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I just, I met up with an agent in LA and just started getting opportunities and it just blossomed and grew from there. And it, it I mean, there's not really any kind of a magic secret about it. It just was... Uh, afforded the opportunities and, and, and made the most of them. So uh, here I am. Enjoy you. How did your journey start? Totally different. And that's kind of a. If you line up 10 actors, especially those that have really made a, um, a little place for themselves within video games or animation, everyone's story of how they got into it is completely different. Um, which shows me that there's not one way to do it. And that goes for really any creative or artistic situation, whether you want to be a singer, an actor, a dancer, whatever, everyone has that kind of their own path. You could go to university and you could study dance or you could study acting, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you're going to do with your yeah. life. I started off um, as a musician and I thought that's how I was going to set the world on fire. And nope, not at all. I get to do it now recreationally, but not vocationally. And it was through that that I met certain people that showed me doors that were opening for me that I didn't even know existed. And I just had to be brave enough to walk through them. But I started off in Texas and I got my start by doing car adverts and you know spots for the radio. And then one by one, just people said, well, do you want to try and do this? I said, sure, let me see if I can do that. And again, the doors just continue to open. But I, I don't know how I've managed to do it. I've been doing it for, would you say 23 years is what you've been doing it? or something like that? Um, yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been my main source of income since 97, but 95 is when I, I took a couple of years, you know, starting with theater and doing things like that. No money in theater. Yeah, there's no, no money. money in theater. Yeah, <laughs> free theater, stand-up comedy, uh, um, that kind of thing. wings and a beer if you do comedy. Chicken, chicken, <laughs> chicken fingers. Chicken yeah, chicken you're fingers. right. Uh, well, you have to that, work your way up to chicken fingers. It yeah. starts off with the... Uh, they give you some soda water, some yeah. seltzer water, and the pretzels. Yeah, he's, he's telling a true story. I, okay. I literally started out, uh, uh, when I didn't have like a theater, a play I was doing, I, I, was, I would do stand-up comedy. And uh, a lot of times it was for a, you know, a, a drink and an appetizer. And I didn't have any money, so that's how I ate. I would go and tell jokes, and they'd give me food. I mean, <laughs> will work for food is something I actually did. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had to... No, I did it just for money. <laughs> money and favors. Luxury. <laughs> so Nolan, you were in um, theater and you were, um, Troy, you were a musician. Yeah. Did that help you with, with using your vocal ranges? Did that help you with your voiceover artistry? 
Um, I got to be honest, I always had been able to do uh, mimic uh, my teachers, my family members. Uh, I always enjoyed impressions and, and dialects and, and different accents. Um, His first impression was the doctor that delivered him. This, this is you. Well, ready? <laughs> yeah, okay. And then I just and he smacked me. So I hit Doc. What's your problem? It's a joke. Um, no, but it was. Uh, and and I, I I've joked about this before, saying that you know my uh, what I got in trouble in school for is what I make a living at doing. Mm. I think that for me and, I, and and most people again who are in this profession or any artist situation, being able to perform is what sets the foundation, most of all. I think that trying to say, well, this this specific thing of me using my voice helped me do that, to a certain extent, sure. Being able to know the business end of a mic and being able to use your voice and be able to sing, but that only goes so far. If you want to be an actor, there's a level of understanding, there's a level of trust, there's a level of character building, there's a level of script interpretation, being able to take direction, all of those things that have absolutely nothing to do with singing or being a musician or being even a stand-up, because you're directing yourself as a stand-up. Um, so those are tenements that one way or another you're going to have to learn if you want to be an actor. What's the difference between do, um, doing voiceovers for gaming and doing animation films? Is there a difference? The process by which they make it. So animation is most often is going to be us all together in a room and we're one of the first things that happens. Um, the creators will come in, they've got their script and they have some storyboards if you're lucky and you're able to see the storyboards and they do it like a radio play and everyone records together. Then they take that and animators either in Korea or in LA or somewhere else in the world will take that and then boom there you go you have your cartoon. Um, with a game, it's such an iterative process and there's so many other ways that they're trying to tell their story, not just linearly and, and diegetically, but they're trying to be able to do that through gameplay, they're trying to do that through uh, in-game VO or on a bigger title like an Uncharted or The Last of Us, they're using cinematics for that. They're shooting movies, two-hour movies within that, or in the case of Hideo Kojima, like 20-hour <laughs> movies. Um, so everyone kind of has their own process by doing it. The thing that is the common denominator is it's still storytelling and no matter what you still have to bring whatever tools are given to you to be able to perform that task and you're still just an actor whether it's in a video game or it's in an animation or it's in theater or stand-up or whatever yeah. you're still just a performer you're still just a storyteller what are the challenges that you face um, with voiceover well early on a lot of the roles were and this goes back to your previous question uh, a lot of, uh, two, two questions ago. Um, early on in gaming, uh, it was a lot of just soldier work, a lot of yelling, you know, grenade and get down and, you know, this way. And um, th the sessions would be long and could be uh, pretty tiring at times. And I think I, I, I go back to my, both my parents used to love to sing around the house. And they had done theater when I, before I was even a thought. And, um, you know, breath control was always something. I was always able to, I was one of the guys who was able to scream for four hours, basically, uh, and, and, and not wear out. And um, so I think that was, that was a challenge. I think as, as gaming has gotten more, um, you know, a little more sophisticated, uh, and, the, and the players, and, uh, they've become more savvy to, to having better content, better written stories. Uh, the challenge is actually, you know, you have to be an actor. You know, we meet a lot of people who want to get into, want to be a voiceover actor. How do I start? I can do all these voices. It's like, well, start with yours. Uh, if you're able to use your voice and, and able to act with it, then if you can do a, a, a different accent or a different um, character voice, but you have to act with it. So be an actor first. Um, uh, Mark Hamill uh, has, has said, you know, people at once asked him, uh, not once, but many times they've asked him, do you like um, uh, real acting or, do you like voice acting or real acting better? Well, it, it, that's it's, it's a ridiculous question because it's, it's all acting. Mm -hmm. Whether, you know, no matter what medium, our job is to uh, give a performance. And uh, whether that's, 
on, a, a, on camera, on a microphone, or, or live on stage. Our job is to deliver that performance, and um, you know, no matter the medium, you, you better you know what you're doing. Now, Troy, you you enjoying yourself drinking coffee? Mm. Is there any ritual you have to get into character? No, I, I don't believe in. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I don't. <laughs> no, I love that answer. Uh, people say it's like you know. I was on set once for a game. Actor was preparing. And I didn't know that he was preparing. All I saw was a person that was in the middle of the stage while everybody else around him was setting up. And he was draped across the table, crying, wailing. And to the point where they finally moved him because they were working and they had to get him out of the way. And he went over to the corner and continued to do that. And he was the third scene of the day. Not even the first, the third scene of the day. And one of their co-stars came in and he recognized me and he was like, oh, he's preparing. And in the scene, the guy did not have to cry. What? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. And even if you say you're trying to get into character, okay, your character if that you're being right now is sitting here drinking a cup of coffee. I, I, any, anything that I'm going to do, I'm going to fabricate that moment and it's going to be a lie. And we're already in the business of telling lies. I believe in going in and doing the work in the moment. In the moment is everything. Because if I come in prepared and in character, I'm no longer listening or watching anything that you're doing. And I should just be in that moment with you. And there have been moments that I've had and scenes that I've shot where I've prepared. And I've come in completely filled and not ready to receive anything that my scene partner or my, my co-star was, was trying to throw at me so that we could be in a scene together. Your preparation ends, my preparation ends by knowing my lines and understanding who that character is. That's it. Because when I show up to set, I come to work, not to prepare. Yeah, and it goes back to the old adage that acting is reacting. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a perfect point. I mean, he's, you don't, all the preparation happens before you get on set. You can have all the teas and all the elixirs and all the vocal warm-ups and whatever you have, but there's going to come a moment where those stop serving you as an actor, and you better be rooted in who that character is without having to have some backflip that you do to get into it. So any message for our South African fan, your South African fans uh, that want to go into voiceover acting? Um, wow. There's a, there's a phenomenal uh, actor, incredibly talented. Uh, you can't go to school for what he can do. No. D. D Bradley Baker. Um, there's a legendary uh, voiceover actor, uh, actor who's really specialized in voice, uh, Frank Welker, mm. who was known for animal sounds and uh, Scooby Doo. He's been Fred on Scooby Doo ever Garfield, since. Garfield, Curious George, all the chirps. Uh, anyway, uh, D Bradley Baker. He's a phenomenal talent. He has a website called I Want to Be a Voice Actor.com. And on there is it's it's filled with some of the best and and the, the, the pragmatic advice that you know you, you give to people. I mean the only advice I would say is be an actor yeah. first. Be an actor first. Uh, and then go to Dee's website because uh, it's just the little things on how to get a demo tape and uh, how to approach an agent, what to write in that, that letter. I mean just Anything you can think of, and, and coming from him, uh, someone's it, incredibly it, accomplished. Incredibly accomplished. It's 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 sound uh, sound advice for anybody who wants to get into this. I would add to that that there will come a point where the common denominator among everybody is that you had to be brave enough to fail. Those doors that were open to me, the doors that were open for him, we ultimately just had to be willing to walk through them, and more than any other tip trick a class you can take that is a step that you must make on your own 100 so the willingness to be able to do that in the face of adversity and possible failure is the the one thing that i would encourage people to to work on the most be ready for that decision be the luck is opportunity meeting preparation when that opportunity comes, you're not going to be lucky, you're going to be prepared. And if the world wants to look at that as you got lucky, great. If you did the work, there's a reason why that opportunity presented itself and there's a reason why you became successful at it. Be an actor, be an actor, be an actor. And even distill it down even further, who we are as people 
we're, we're storytellers. We've been doing it since we crawled out of the caves. We are storytellers. Just tell your story. Thank you so much for taking your time to chatting to us. My pleasure. And enjoy your stay in South Africa. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a blast. Appreciate it. Hello, kiddies. Your old pal, the Joker, here. You're listening to Radio 786. They got the numbers out of order. <laughs>